The fight over education spending and Governor Susana Martinez's reform agenda was at the heart of the budget disagreements in the legislative session. Democrats wanted individual school districts to decide how to use extra funds, while Republicans favored giving the public education department more money to implement reforms from Ms. Martinez. The compromise gives $17.5 million to New Mexico, and new money, excuse me, to the public education department for merit pay, teacher evaluations, and other initiatives from the governor. But, but, districts can decide whether to adopt them within the framework of their collective bargaining contracts. And we're joining us to talk about that and lots more is one of our line regulars, Laura Sanchez, CEO of the New Mexico Green Chamber of Commerce. And another and a little bit of, of crud for the legislature this year that happens every year. That's okay. And another regular <laughs> attorney, Sophie Martin, is here as well. Returning to the table this week, former state representative Janice Arnold Jones. We're very happy she's here. We welcome a new addition to the line table, former state senator Mark Boitano. Mark, let me start with you. Your take on the session, budget in particular, it seems like everyone got a little bit of what they wanted here, but there's some noise starting that almost like a truck that's stacked too high and there's like a weight limit that's been cross some almost like there's too much money in the budget people are starting to worry that we our percentages of our, our investments are going to take a ding what's your what's your sense of that you know this is a significant year i think this may be the biggest budget we've ever had mm -hmm. and uh, we go back to Feels 2007 like mm -hmm. 2008 and the numbers were 61 this is approaching 62 so mm -hmm. there's more money in the budget than we've ever uh, we've ever seen before. And mm -hmm. you know, there's a saying in Santa Fe that if everybody's unhappy, uh, you have a good budget. And that's right. that's what I'm seeing. You know, the governor got a little bit of what uh, what she wanted. Uh, right. uh, education established got a little bit of, uh, mm -hmm. of what they wanted and so forth. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it seems like a pretty good budget. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the reality is that the people who, who work the budget on the Senate side and the House side, I think mm -hmm. uh, most reasonable people will agree that they're they're frugal and they, they pay attention to the numbers. And so mm -hmm. that's what we have is a budget that's reasonably, uh, reasonably responsible. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, you know, we've got teacher salary increases, we've got state worker increases. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, uh, everybody got a little bit in the budget. For now, as they say, for now. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see all those reasons. Let me swing to our other extra up here. Good to see you, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Again, a big, as Mark just mentioned, it's a big loaded budget. Everyone seemed to got stuff in there. Uh, just a couple things, Governor. She wanted some under the line money, twenty million. She got seventeen and a half. It's not bad. I said, but that's very good. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, when you know, it, and she's making a lot of positive noise so far about this budget as well. We're hearing it's not like she's ready to kick this thing right back. No, I think she. Mm -hmm. You know, even the reserves were close. She wanted ten mm percent. -hmm. Uh, I wince a little bit because it appears that we're going to go into a large fire season, mm -hmm. and you uh, need those reserves just to make sure that you can take care of those issues. Um, but it, that was, it was like 9.57, sure. and she wanted 10. Yeah. Uh, but I noted that Lucky Varela said on the floor that everything in this budget is going to be sanded. Uh, there will be a requirement, and how much sanding is, and that term means that they're going to shave pieces off. They're going to shave sure. off the corners, but I don't know how much. Yeah, that's interesting. And that did happen a little bit along the way, Laura. Some things got agreed to, but there was sanding and shaving all over the place <laughs> <laughs> to make these things happen. Uh, again, and, and compromise is the word right now. Is this a good compromise in your view, how this happened? Well, I think the overall process was very different this year than it has been in the past, mainly yeah. because, you know, it usually starts in the House, the House comes up with a version that they pass out, and then it gets often backlogged in the Senate, mm -hmm. and this time the Senate, you know, didn't want to wait around right. after there had been a vote, and then there was still not a budget that came out, so they finally just passed their own. Right. So I think it was, it was definitely different this year, and um, I'm not sure that everybody got everything that they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly a lot of the... Uh, I mean, I'll just say for the Please. groups that we represent, we de def definitely did not see as much progress as we would have hoped. And that, that's investment in high tech and renewable energy. Yeah. Um, but we also didn't see a huge cut in those areas. So I guess, you know, in that sense, that, that's that's walking away with something. Sure. But um, yeah, I think there was definitely a lot of, uh, I think early on, they really, it didn't look like there was a lot of movement on anything for mm -hmm. about the first week and a half. Mm -hmm. And that means that, you know, if you're not doing anything in committee for about a week and then you start late, you know, you're already behind the eight right. ball, and uh, and it just wasn't a lot of movement on any Sure. Else. But yet, Sophie, it's, it's interesting how, when you think back to last year, and we mm -hmm. had a bit of a calendar hitch last year, we had a the session ending on a Saturday, right. which created that crazy Saturday morning that we all remember. Mm -hmm. It was just madness. But a budget did get 
out on a some you know not, maybe not super timely but it got out so, but and I there was some one response thing, one know. thing that's worth remembering about last year is that there's been a lot of heartache over over what happened in mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. day last moments of the legislative session and what we see this year is that while not everything got done and certainly not everything that that many people would have liked to have seen mm -hmm. Um, the budget was passed not at the last minute. It was passed earlier. Right. Groups uh, had an opportunity to weigh in. The legislators appear to have had an opportunity to really review it. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I think we're seeing to a certain extent the the opposite of what happened last year, where it's it's better thought out. And because people did suffer some political damage, mm -hmm. uh, not having really read the budget, not really knowing what they were voting on last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that I think... Let me, let me swing yeah. it because we got a bunch of swings. I'm, I'm sorry to do that, but okay. is it you? I, I appreciate your point. Is Sophie quite right there that there was an agreement? I'm thinking of Kenny Martinez. I'm thinking that that's not going to happen again. What happened last year? We are not going to prostrate ourselves out in the last day and have people complaining that they didn't even read the bill before. Did, did, was it your sense there was an agreement that that wasn't going to happen again this year? Well, possibly, but uh, I mean, a couple of different moving parts. One is this is a 30-day session. Okay. Focus is budget. Last year, you know, 60-day session, there's just a lot of moving sure. parts. So it's a little bit different, the okay. environment. Also, Janice and I were talking a little bit, but it seems like maybe the management style and mm -hmm. administrative uh, work uh, ethic is different today mm -hmm. under uh, Speaker Martinez than under Speaker Lujan. Okay. And so um, things don't seem to be moving as quickly uh, and they seem to be uh, happening a little bit uh, smoother than right. under, under the predecessor. So I think that's a, that's a part of it as well. Sure. Another, another interesting point, Janice, that, that uh, uh, Laura brought up just a little bit ago was some of the machinations between the Senate and the House. I mean, some folks kind of walked across the, <laughs> the, so to speak, and did some things that were somewhat unusual. What was your sense of that? Well, I, so it is unusual to have mm -hmm. the budget start from the, from the Senate, mm -hmm. but it didn't really. Um, I, having watched this budget, budget process, there was great agreement going in, okay. um, more than I have seen in, in many years. And so I, I, I appreciate the kudos to the Senate, but they really didn't create a budget. There was a very good I'm budget. I'm partial to the Senate. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I feel outnumbered here. Um, but, you know, in, in, in deference to uh, Representative Kiki Saavedra, this is his last budget, uh, they were very careful to make sure that they that there was great agreement. Right. And, and so I, I think that's really what you saw. And, and you didn't see major changes it was just they just addressed the issues sure. that that were kind of holding it up and they were able to put it back over because people had read it that mm -hmm. was really quite remarkable yeah. and and the so. fact that the, because i have been there when you get the budget and you're going right <laughs> 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 and the clock's ticking. And it's right. Right. Exactly and right. On. Water right. projects were a big deal going in. The, the governor or state of the state said, you know, a lot of money for projects, 60 percent. What happened right. there? You know. Well, I think there was not enough agreement among yeah. different groups that were interested in that, and a lot of, you know, uh, representatives and senators from different areas that had their own particular bills. Right. And so I think that a lot of those, you know, didn't make make the cut and make mm -hmm. it all the way through the process. But I think one of the interesting things in terms of this year being unique. Um, and I think back to sort of the management and, and just trying to uh, keep order, I guess, um, mm -hmm. party, party line uh, sure. and all that, um, you know, the margins really decreased this time. I mean, we were really talking about very slim margins in the House. Right. Um, we had two members that were ill the entire mm -hmm. session, right. um, which ha w was a, a huge um, dynamic. I mean, mm -hmm. that was something that really affected um, committee votes, um, you know, in, in mm -hmm. House Tax and Rev, for example. Okay you were tied in House Tax and Rev. So it was Going no in, longer yeah. um, an issue of a party line vote. It, and I think, interestingly enough, it meant that there had to be a lot more discussion mm. um, across the aisle um, on a lot of issues. And so um, in that sense, I did see a lot, a lot of uh, an interesting, I think, dynamic that, that mm -hmm. we maybe could use more of, <laughs> frankly, <laughs> in some situations. So, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Um, Sophie, for, for Lots of folks, you know, they go up, they have expectations. Laura has her group, you know, everyone's got a, 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 a cut at this. Mm -hmm. But was there enough for everybody to be happy? And I appreciate Mark's point earlier, you know, the, the saying everyone's unhappy. But is everyone going to be happy here? Just a fundamental question. Do we have enough oh to move goodness, forward human, with? As human you know? beings, we're never going to be <laughs> totally happy with That's what true. comes out of the legislature. That's, That's not possible. There is still, and you see this amongst the groups who lobbied this year, who are, who are interested in particular pieces of legislation. Right. Remember that there is this next step, which is that everything mm -hmm. goes to the governor's desk. And so it's not really 
done right. for the uh, the constituents who have been active in lobbying the legislature. They have one more step, which is the governor's right. desk. Right. And there is, uh, I think, less anxiety amongst the groups that I'm talking to, to, to the earlier comment that she seemed more or less satisfied with the budget, mm -hmm. less anxiety than I've seen in the past. And I think that is a function of the 30-day session and the fact that mm -hmm. it's so focused. Mm -hmm. It's not also a function, Mark, if it's an election year. Mm -hmm and the avoidance of a special, meaning no one can get out there and campaign and raise money and do those things. And no, I can't imagine anybody would want to have that happen. Is that part of the dynamic yeah. driving to get something done on a timely manner? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely it is. But I, I think also that, I mean, you know, the, the name of the game in politics is compromise. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of discussion about compromise. Even, you know, uh, Representative Jett in the, in the House said, listen, if I don't see compromise, you're not gonna get my vote. Gotcha. So she, mm -hmm. you know, there was a lot of, uh, lot of discussion about the why she did what she did, but that was the, mm -hmm. uh, that, that's what she said. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, we saw a compromise on the part of the unions, we saw a compromise on the part of the governor. Right. So, I mean, that's the name of the game. We saw a lot of that, and we're getting a budget that I think mostly people are going to be able to live with. Mm, interesting. In a moment, we're back with more on education and the budget in our Roundhouse Report.